So here you can see that we have a patient who has been cannulated in their right antecubital fossa or ACF. And what we're going to do is set up a bag of fluids to be able to give this patient some IV fluid therapy. To do that, as you can see, we have all the equipment that we need. We have an IV giving set. We've got the fluids that we're going to actually administer. We have gloves for infection prevention and control. And we've got some tape to tape down the tubing itself once we've actually connected it to the cannula. The first thing we need is to do our standard checks. So if we have a look at the giving set, we need to look for package integrity. Just make sure that it hasn't been opened previously in any way at all prior to us using it. We're then going to have a quick look at the expiry date. So you can see two dates on here. You have the manufacturing date, which is February 2015, and the expiry date of February 2017. So we'll check that that is in date at the time that we're actually going to administer it. We're then going to have a look at the tubing itself to check that it's intact. And once we open the pack itself, we can have a closer inspection and we can also check that the flow control operates smoothly and will be appropriate for the patient. We also need to have a look and just see that the caps are on the ends where they should be, one on the cannula and one on the other end ready to attach onto the cannula itself. We then do similar checks for the IV fluids themselves, but we include a few other things. So firstly, we're going to check that it's definitely the right kind of fluid that we want to administer. So we've got sodium chloride, 0.9%, which is what we want to administer to this patient. We'll also have a look for expiry dates as well. Now you can see there's a batch number and an expiry date on this itself, so 08 2019, so we're well within date at the time that we're recording this. We'll have a look at the fluid itself and just check that there's a clarity to the fluid, there's no particulates floating around in it, doesn't appear to be anything out of the ordinary there, and your packaging, just check that there's no holes in it, etc. as well. We're also going to check that we've got the covers present on the administration port, just so there's been no tampering prior to us actually using the fluid itself. So we're now going to think about connecting the giving set up to the bottle of fluids and then up to the patient. So the first thing we need to do is on the giving set itself, have a look at the flow control and just check that it is actually closed. So we're going to scroll it all the way down to the bottom so we've got a closed flow control. We're also going to check that it's appropriately positioned. You want it a nice distance away from the chamber at the top where you're going to count the drop rate. So we've moved that so that we've got a nice distance between the two. We're then going to remove the protective covers from the fluid bag and from the end of the giving set. Now it's important to be careful at this point as we now have active sharps in play. We're going to insert the cannula into the port with a twisting and pushing motion. And we should start to see fluid come down into the chamber itself. Now if we squeeze the chamber, you will see fluid rush into the chamber and we should fill that up until it's around about half full. That will allow us to be aware of the drop rate as we can see the drips come down as the fluid moves through the chamber once the tap itself is open. The next step is to slowly open the fluid line. And we can see the drips start to go into the chamber and the fluid moves slowly down the tubing itself. We want to get rid of all of the air bubbles and the slower that we do this, the less air bubbles are going to form within the tubing. As it gets towards the end of the line, we can raise the end so that it slows the movement of fluid. And we should be able to control the fluid so that we get very, very minimal leakage as we get towards the end. And as the fluid reaches the end of the tube, we can close off the flow control to prevent any major leakage. We're then going to attach the tubing to the cannula itself. So we're going to apply pressure just proximal to the end of the cannula where it would be in the patient's vein. And we're going to remove the cap itself from the end of the cannula. This should ideally prevent any blood from leaking out of the cannula. We'll then attach the tubing and screw it gently into the end there. We can then put a safety loop in place on the patient's arm and secure that down with some tape. That should help to prevent 
the tubing being yanked away from the end of the cannula in the event of it being caught in transit. 